Hello everyone and welcome to Fire Emblem Plays Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon is a game you may or may not have heard of. I like playing games that you may or may not have heard of. So um, we'll see how it goes. This is a game that is extremely difficult and a game that usually ends up in having people either die or go extremely crazy. So we're going to start this. This is a dungeon exploration game with um, some interesting elements of uh, city building. Let's see if the starting video can help us explain. suggestion through the corrupted countryside leading only I fear to ever more tenebrous places there is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road and on its writhing path you will face viciousness violence and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors Steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. <laughs> the old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. Alright, so basically the premise of this story is we own a dungeon slash castle slash area zone of land basically something that was passed down to us from generation to generation and uh, we have to fight to um, uh, fight the terrors that our ancestors have created now we start with two people who are renowned who's a crusader and dismiss who is a highwayman now this is a room you can see here the, what the room looks like and once the room has been emptied as it is now we can move along in here and doesn't really matter but it's pretty much useless so we will move to the next room So now we have four squares of randomly generated terrain. So we will either find some interesting tools, some enemies or traps. And that will depend. Like right now there's nothing. So we've got the next one. And this was... <laughs> so uh, this is an enemy we'll have to attack. Combat is turn-based. And yeah, so now we have a few choices. We have every character has four abilities, but depending on where they are in the party, uh, like right now, Dismas is in the second place, he can use a certain amount of uh, abilities. As you can see on the, here, uh, you can use this ability when you're in the first, third, or second, or third. Uh, area but the, in the fourth and with it you can hit either the first or the second place on the enemy's path the pistol shot you have to be in the th second third or fourth place and you can attack the second third and fourth place now we can use it because we're in the second place but since the enemy is in the first one we cannot touch him so we won't be able to use that one there is the Graveshot Blast, who does a lot less damage. As you can see, the damage mod is minus 60%. But we can hit the first, second, and third enemy in one shot. And the last one, a Tracking Shot, as the, is the same as the pistol. We cannot use it on the first person here. So we could either use an area of effect that has a lot less chance to hit or a one person shot that has a chance to cause a bleed. So we're gonna use that on this enemy. You have all the informations that 
the enemy has and how many chances we have to hit him and crit him and the damage we can do. And his health. He has 12 health right now. We did 6 damage, that is good. And he is bleeding. Bleeding will give him 2 damage per rounds for 3 rounds. And he's also got some bleed resist uh, debuff, which means that it's going to be easier to bleed him again. And bleed stacks. The rounds don't, but the bleed stacks. So maybe we'll be able to create some more bleed before this one is done. Our Crusader has the option to smite, which does more damage if the enemy is unholy. We could have the Zealous Accusation, which has a chance to... No, it's an area of effect for the first two enemies. The Stunning Blow that has a chance to stun, but does a lot less damage. Stunning enemies is actually super important if you don't want them to act during a turn. And the last one, Bulwark of Fate, gives 25% um, protection and marks an enemy. Marking enemies will give them a debuff when you try to attack him again. So we're going to go for the Stunning Blow and hope that it works. It did! And you can see now he's stunned, but since it's his turn, he will receive the bleed and the um, remove the stun. Also, since he has been stunned, he now has a stun resist buff until the next turn. Let's hope we don't get there. Alright, we have killed them and we have uh, found 750 gold. Now we can look at our inventory here and notice that it is uh, going to be filled pretty much, uh, pretty f fast. So we will move to... Oh yeah, there is also morale, I forgot to say. So we will move forward uh, since we've killed the enemy. The morale you can see here, it's the stress basically. And once it reaches 100, the character will be stressed. And if it reaches 200, I think they will get a permanent debuff, which is bad. You don't want that to happen. And now we have found an interactive object. Uh, sometimes they're good, sometimes they, they are bad, and sometimes they allow us to interact with them with some of the items we have found along the way, or that we have brought with us. So we cannot use any item to go here, so we will just check inside the tent. They left valuables, we found one citrine and a thousand gold. That is a good thing. We might have found something bad. As for the light, the light that is around us will go lower as we move forward. Every time we move one square, whereas it, whatever, if it is in the corridor or in the rooms, this will go down. And when we reach certain points, we will get debuffs. So when it's at full, we have a chance of surprising the monsters and to see where we're going. But as we go lower, um, we will get more experience, but the enemies will receive more chances to surprise us. And being surprised is a bad thing. Because that means it gives basically one free turn to our enemies. Alright, so now we have two enemies. We could, uh, this one is a big enemy, so he takes two spots in the rank. So we can only uh, attack him with um, this ability, the sword one. So we have two choices, either kill the tank in the front and then have an easier time killing the fusilier. But he has 35 health and this one has 12. And this guy can actually hit us which is a problem. So we're going to try to kill this guy first. Yeah, that's a good hit. He used an area of uh, effect ability and it removed some of our dodge um, chances on the highwayman. Our dodge chance is right here. Uh, so now we can only attack the first enemy. So we will go with a stunning blow. 
And it worked. No, nope, he resisted it. Sorry, it did not work. Uh, this enemy had some uh, stun resist, 50%. And we have been moved around, so things are going to be different now. The tra tracking shot actually buffs our character. And we will do it on this guy. So now we have a lot of buffs going on. Which is a good thing. I'm going to try stunning him again. The more we can stun them, the easier our time will be. God damn, this enemy is annoying. We've managed to dodge and we should be able to kill him now. Yeah, we crit. Critical hits actually remove some of the stress that's been accumulated. Accumulated? But some attacks, like that one, give stress. Alright, so we will now uh, hit this guy until he goes down. We could also exchange our places and have the, um, the, the Highwayman go second place to the Crusader. But it's unnecessary at this point. He's almost down, he only has... Oh no, he was bleeded, so we've killed him. So we made a little bit of gold, but we've got four crests and medicinal herbs. These can be used to eliminate combat debuffs, as the uh, I think the bleed counts as that. But it can also be used on objects to maybe find something interesting. Now we have completed our uh, D area. And as such, we can complete the adventure. But we're going to stay for a second and look at this chest first. It is a trap chest. So we're going to ask... Um, I think this guy has a bonus against chests, does he? Give me a second. Uh, traps. Yeah, he's got 40% trap resistance. And the other guy... This guy, he's got 10%, so of course he's worse. We have permanent buffs. This one gives us 10% damage if the torch is about 75 uh, point. And right now it is at... God damn. Okay, 70. So this one gives stress and still allows us to scout and surprise monsters. We can also snuff it out or reduce it if we want to, because it does give some advantages. But right now it's unnecessary. Uh, the Crusader also is God-fearing, which means he will only pray for stress relief, which is extremely bad, because that means he only has one way to release stress. And he's Kleptomaniac, which means he will sometimes open boxes and steal the items that are in there. That is annoying. As far as the Highwayman goes, he's got plus 15 stun resist, he's got plus 2 speed, which is great, uh, and he's a known cheat, cheat, which means he cannot gamble. That is not too bad, because it only blocks him from one area of stress relief, compared to the Crusader, who only has one. So we will open the bandit's chest with the Highwayman. It was trapped. So we are now blighted, but it doesn't matter because we have completed our task. So we come back home by getting, and we will get 5,000 gold, and this is what we have found along the way. Also, sometimes we do get some new uh, points as we get experience. So this gave us a permanent minus 10% stress. This is good, this is very useful. And damn it, we've got the tough, which gives plus 10% max HP, and the soft, which gives minus 5%. So basically we've got plus five max HP, which is stupid. We can't get rid of those, but it got, it's gonna cost a lot of money. Money that we do not currently have. So there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's going to get clearer and clearer as we go. 
<clears throat> we have all these quests, which are basically uh, defeat enemies, defeat uh, special ones, defeat bosses, raise an abomination to resolve the level 6. I have no idea what that is. Okay, uh, we'll see. We'll see eventually. We have come back. We are level 1. Uh, get him where you may. This is just for help. Alright, so there are a lot of areas we can go to. But right now there are only three that calls for us. So the graveyard will allow us to... Uh, we will see here everybody that has died on our team, but so far there's nobody. The Ancestors' Memoirs. You will know the tragic extent of my failings. Basically, this allows us to go back and see the videos we've seen so far. So there are two, but we've already seen them in this video, so it's unnecessary. And the Stagecoach allows us to... All right, so here we will be able to hire new people. Uh, plague doctors and vestals are actually very useful, so we will hire them. It doesn't cost us anything, I think, but of course it's limited, and we have a limited amount of people we can have with us. We can upgrade it when we get some new... Um, Busts, portraits, deeds, or crests. We have found four crests, so it is pretty useful. Experience recruits. Instructor mastery level 2, weaponsmithing level 2, and armor spitting level 2. So if we do get some better levels up on the other buildings, we will get more experience recruits. And this increases the number of recruits available for hire. The change will take effect after we return from your next quest. So instead of two, we would have a choice of three. And Hero Barracks increases the side of the Hero Roster. So it's at nine right now, but if we put points in there, it would be at 12. There is the... Uh, we have to complete more quests. Okay, everything else has to complete more quests. So we will simply go with our four people. Now the level is actually also important because high level units will not be interested. They are too uh, important to go on low level quests. Just the same, low level heroes will not want to go to high level quests because they fear they are unprepared, which is actually right. Alright, so this is uh, the world and the areas we can go to. There's the warrens, the weald, the cove, and the ruins. And there's also the darkest dungeon, but we don't want to go there yet. See, this one is a level 6 mission, which means we need level 6 people to go there. This one is a level 1, so level 0 and level 1 people are going to be interested in coming. So we will place our people and we're just gonna see if things are right because right now um, they will look at their abilities that they have unlocked and tell us which position they want to be in. So she says she would like to be in the third one. And the reason for that is because things are gonna be easier on her. Oh shit, she is super bad on the first round. She has accuracy in crits with humans and gets plus two speed if torch is about seven, above 75. She also has minus 10% disease resist. That is bad. Uh, judgment can be cast from either the first or the second area. Divine grace, first or, uh, I mean, third or fourth. Sorry, it's on the other way around. Elimination cannot be cast on the fourth area. This 
does minus 20 dodge on an enemy and gives plus 5 torches. And this can only be cast in the first or second area. And it gives plus 15% damage versus unholy and lowers the damage and accuracy of an enemy. But they have to be they would have to be in the first position, and that is bad. Because this is our healer. So these two are the most important skills, and these two are not. So she is doing fine where she is. The uh, Plague Doctor has 10% damage if HP is below 50%. He's got 10% Plague Resist, but he has minus 10% Death Blow Resist. Okay, so when it, one of our characters reaches zero health, they will go on a death blow door, de death door, and any shot after that will kill them. However, sometimes one of these blows will throw another dice roll, and they may have a chance here, 57%, to actually not die and be uh, there for another round. But you don't want to count on that. He's also got minus 3% crit if HP below 50%. Uh, so he, he does more damage but less crit if he's below 50. And he is super happy in both uh, the two areas here. So I think I'm actually going to trade these two. Oops. Just come here. Because she has the ability to use elimination from the third area, whereas the plague doctor does not. And he's got the noxious blast, which is a blight damage. Blight is like bleed, but for poison, I guess. He can make an area of effect damage on the last two enemies. And this is the same thing, but with stun chances. He also can heal and cure blight and or bleed on people. So these two are going to be our healers. Well, this is our healer. This is an assassin slash healer. And these two are fighters. So now that we go here, our goal is to explore 90% of the rooms. And we're going to get these rewards as we go. Charms, I'll explain later what they do they're like equipment all right and now we have to prepare later. preparing is a double-edged sword because the more prepared you are the better things are going to be and the easier too however it costs money money in money that you may be wasting because you won't need all of the items you're going to get and I really don't remember how much of each things I would bring. So I'm going to get eight food and eight torches. The holy water and anti-venom we're going to get, but it's not always useful. We could also get a key. We also have to be careful because the more items we bring, the more likely we are going to fill our inventory and have to throw them away. Maybe a shovel too, just in case. Bandages. Ah. All right, let's go with that. I, I think we're over preparing for this expedition, but it's better to be over prepared than under prepared. That's for damn sure. I feel there's a lot of things I'm not explaining right, but if you have any questions or comments, please tell me. Tell me in the box below the video. Uh, okay, oh, we've already been through that. So this is the actual map. Now we need to go, wait, just give me the big one. Okay, so we need to go to 90% of the rooms, which means we have to go to all of them except one. And in the room, sometimes there is fighting, sometimes there are chests, sometimes there is not, nothing. This is a torch, which was unburnt. So we have gotten one torch. 
as you can see, every time we move forward, we lose one uh, tick of torches. Now we could go inside with the dim light, but that would only give us stress and scouting and monster surprise chance. However, if we do use one torch, we go back to 95 and suddenly no more stress and everybody's more ready to surprise enemies if there are any. There are! Super! So we haven't surprised them, but they haven't surprised us either. So we will just attack the first one and Blight is always good. We're gonna go for the Air of Effect. Nice, he shot both of them and killed one. And he will actually give us plus five torches. And that did not kill him, but he's pretty close. That only did damage, so it's not too bad. And we end up with a nice smite. Which, actually, since he killed the enemy, gave him some stress relief. And we've got some gold, and there's a chest here. It's unlocked, so there's no need to use a key on it. Um, let's try to just open it. Yeah, contents are yours. We've found another shovel, gold, and rubies. Rubies are worth money, but they do not stack as much as money does, I think. So you have to decide what you want to do with it. So now we move forward and okay so this is why you bring shovels uh, because the rubble can be removed but it will cost us time and as such will cost us stress but wait did I not use the tool it was right there oh for fuck's sakes all right so instead of using the shovel I used our hands so we lost health stress and everything bad happened Get our torch back. They're right in the nick of time. Stressful incantation does slight damage but adds stress and lowers the light. It's a bit of a bummer, really. Uh, no damage, but the blight is good. As you you can see, this uh, yellow bar on the right of their health means that they haven't uh, played yet. So we will huge the use the judgment on this guy. Uh, this guy? This guy, yeah. Kill them and healed us in the meantime. Uh, corpses act as temporary obstacles and will eventually go away on their own. You can attack corpses to destroy them faster, but often a better approach is to use ranged skills push pull skills and even corpse clearing special skills that some heroes possess. Monsters killed with bleed, blight or crits leave no corpses at all. Okay, so this means that the third character here will not move forward, which means that we cannot uh, attack him straight on. But we can attack the corpse and destroy it. And the corpse is actually blighted, so that's funny. And we blighted him. It's gonna get four damage, which is not enough to kill him. But we should heal. Should we heal? We're gonna heal our crusader. Because we don't want them to be hurt. Oh, they dodged. That was a good dodge. Now that since the. Blight damage actually will kill this enemy before they can act. We can try to make something good going. So we're going to use the um, Bulwark of Fate here, which will buff us and give us some more light. Uh, this guy will just exchange his place because I want to heal again as much as we can. Because this is free and we cannot use these abilities when we're not fighting. And we know that this enemy is gonna die. There you go. We have some Onyx, which is basically the same thing as the Ruby, but worth less. 
And we can now replace our team the way we like it. All right, so we move forward again. And now that the lights are dim, we're going to use another torch back at 86. And now we can go inside the room. But I think I'm going to keep this room for the next episode. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the box below. Um, if you could, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and like the videos. It would help a lot. And, well, that's, that's it. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> In any case, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time.